So we have seen the problem described in the previous unit. And the solution to it is to let the proposer acquire a leader role for a period of time. And that is what we call a time lease. So let us see how we can implement the idea of time lease in uh, this replicated state machine scenario. So, we talked about the solution. It is time-based leader lease. And the intuition goes as follows. So, we have a group of acceptors. So, acceptor grants a proposal a time-based leader lease for a period of time. And in this case, we say, let's say, 10 seconds. And if the proposer gets the grant for a lease from a majority of acceptors, then uh, the proposer assume the leader role on this group. Okay. Fine. And in this time period, until the first acceptor lease expires, the proposer knows that there is no other proposer that can hold the lease on this group. Which would mean, even if this leader, as in the scenario we talked before, was P1, was partitioned from the rest of the system, he knows that he is still a leader for a period of time. So, for example, he can answer the read requests. So, during this time, the proposer can safely respond to reads from local st his local state, basically. Okay. So, let us look now to the time-based uh, leader lease again. So, so, this can be integrated in, in Paxos, okay? So, this can be integrated in Paxos. So, as before, that's, that's what we're going to do, is that a proposal proposes to f to become a leader in or to to start Paxos round uh, where we in a leader based Paxos uh, say at round n. So and as before, the acceptor Q then joins round n by sending a promise in response to a prepare. So the proposal does a prepare and then. Uh, and and then the acceptors in the normal case uh, promise not to accept any proposal with a lower round. So this is as usual. Now, in addition, so this prepare is also a request for the acceptors not to accept any other proposal for a period of time. So so now in addition we require that if Q joins round N at time T, then Q promises not to join a higher round, a higher round, until time T plus, say, 10 seconds. That's the period of the lease. So now if a proposal P gets promises from majority, then he knows that no other proposal can get a majority of promises during this next 10 second period. So, so this is a basic idea of the algorithm. So let us look to here. So this is, we have a proposer and two acceptors here. So he will send, this proposer will send a prepare. And this prepare not only tells I am preparing for round N, It's also saying more. It is saying I'm preparing for round N for 10 seconds. So this is the prepare. And here is here is a promise. Okay, these these two messages I will call prom 
promises. These are the promises. So once he get these messages, he knows now he is a leader for a period of time, say ten seconds. So, so this is as you, this is ten seconds. Say we say this is ten seconds. Okay. So that is that is the situation. Very good. All right. Um, so this is a basic idea. So this is an outline, but this idea we have to be careful how to implement it correctly, and that's what we're going to see now. Next, we have two issues that we have to take into account. What are these? First, our network is asynchronous. It means we don't know how long time it takes for a proposal to communicate with the replicas or the acceptors. This is what. The second issue, what is known as clock drifts, and clock drift is really clocks in different uh, machines may run at different speeds. We are going to address this later in the next unit to uh, study it carefully. But now let us look only to the notion of asynchronity of the network. Okay. So here is issue number one, asynchronous network. So P is our proposer. He wants to be a leader at time t0 for a period of time, for 10 seconds. Then he sends a prepare message, say, um, to himself and to another acceptor, Q. So he sends a prepare. OK, that is fine. This message arrives at time t1. So t1, at this point, is accepting this prepare message and is promising not only he will not accept any proposal with uh, lower proposal numbers he's also he's he's promising not to accept any proposals any prepare or a proposal from other processes for 10 seconds okay these promises arrives here okay so now P knows that he got the promises. But let us look now to the current situation. So he got a promise at time t2. That is what we know at this point. So let us see what we can do. Here is an interesting situation, which is f from the perspective of Q, he, his promise for 10 seconds extends from this, from t1 T4. T4 is T1 plus 10 seconds. That's the time when he will not accept any other leaders, let us say. Hmm? Good. And, but P cannot know at what exact time Q sent the prompts. He doesn't really know how long time it took uh, for the communication the network. It might be that the message from P to Q was very fast. So it's like here. This is a right. So he doesn't know this. He doesn't know this. Okay. He only knows the following. He knows that T0 has to be less than T1 and less than T2. Okay. And for P to be conservative, he assumes that from his point of view, T1 is equal to T0. So, so it means from P's perspective, he thinks that the acceptors start accepting things from this point. Okay. So now, so the only thing he can, he can guarantee P is that that he will hold the lease from this point to this point. So P holds the lease until T3, which is T0 plus 10 seconds. So this, I think, covers the issue. So, so because of the asynchronous nature of communication, when the asynchronous network, basically, 
So we can see that P actually holds the lease or the role a shorter period than would have been possible if he the communication was known a priori. The communication time was known a priori. Okay. The second issue is um, clock drift. And we will leave this to the next unit. Thank you.